kudos to Zane and, and Eric. Those guys played super well. I think that was their first time playing together. And I thought that that overall chemistry definitely meshed. Yeah, tough, tough team. Uh, Zane's getting really dangerous on fourth balls, just speeding everything up, two-handed backhand, forehand side, really trusting that paddlehead speed. And then Eric's just become a complete player. We see the big frame. Uh, we see what he's able to do offensively. But the guy has some really soft hands, too. Yeah, and, and I mean, Zane's drive is big. But Eric's drive, like my fourth ball, literally all I had to do was just kiss it at like 10%, the old the old first base. And, uh, and I mean, literally, there was so much pop off of my fourth just with like a quick little A to B punch. And um, I, I, I felt like during that match, uh, yeah, it was like some of the like hardest heavy hitting that I've dealt with and had to, and, and like really had to counter the game. The game's speeding up, game's getting quicker. And I mean, Eric is freaking playing like a, playing like a singles player, you know? I mean, I mean, get the, Get the guy playing singles on Thursday, right? What's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. Welcome to the McGuffin Show. Uh, we've been off for a couple weeks. Uh, spent some time in Orlando at the PGA Show. Went to Phoenix for a week. Played Desert Ridge. Um, came out, got a new haircut. Uh, brought uh, our full-time videographer on the road, Peter. Um, hey, train. Train, Traino, who uh, came out. Was that your train. first time meeting Train? Uh, I met him one other time briefly, um, but yeah, it felt like we've known each other for years. Brothers at heart. Joking about it, like, hit it off right away. Just was easy, easy to hold. Peter's week. so witty. All his like one-liners, like they just like smack in the face. You're like, it may take a second, and then you're like, oh my gosh, that was clever. He's he's witty with <laughs> those with those pythons. Uh, yes. Petey, Petey Python. You keep your eyes up here. Hey, uh, uh, this this is a shout out to Matthew. Uh, who, who teaches for us. So Matthew came back, was uh, talking to Peter like a day before you got there. Peter digs very linear. Uh, uh, K-Mac dinks more than linear. And <laughs> and uh, the funny thing was that Matt obviously knows both of your games, right? So Matt right. was like, you know, who's got the better knife? And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so when you and P-Train were, you know, I don't know, for like five minutes, you guys were hitting balls at Brad's. And and yep. P-Train had told me that he, that he won that back end of back end dinking battle. He called, he called Matt that night and he said, Hey, I got an answer for you. Okay. I have the better sword. <laughs> he got me. He got me. I'll be honest. Yeah. We had two or three knife to knife battles. Right. And I think he, he definitely won the majority. Oh, that's too so funny. funny. <laughs> uh, anyhow, but uh, yeah, happy to have K-Mac in my corner. Happy to have P-Train in my corner. I had mama there at courtside. First person to cheer after every single point. Uh, by by Monday, she but had no voice. That's why I have no voice whatsoever. Right now, right? <laughs> um, but uh, anyhow, I want to give a big shout out to all my sponsors: Yola, Skechers, Rainstorm, Miller Lite, Duper, Wild Health, Turner Grip, Beamer, Ultimate Repair Rex, Details Wine, and Pickle Play App. Pickle Play App has 100k users. Uh, pretty sweet. If you guys want to uh, find uh, courts nationwide, find people to play with, check out their profiles, make sure they're not sandbagging. <laughs> um, you can also uh, find our clinics on there. You yep. can find teaching pros on there. Um, and there's a paid version, I believe, with some extra added benefits. You got some uh, teaching components in there and some other uh, kind of add to add value type stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think it's great. You can travel to a new city and you can look up players that are close to your level and you can reach out to them, meet them at a local park or whatever. So a good way to find, um, level based play. Yep. Yep. Uh, appreciate that family. And, uh, let's see here. I just debuted the, uh, creamsicle, um, orange sketchers along with the, uh, blueies, the baby blues. Steel blue. Th there's been lots of talk <laughs> about that. There's going to be coming out here very soon. Um, uh, let's see. K-Mac, uh, tell us what you uh, think about the new Yola gear. Uh, obviously, um, you know, you don't you don't have one of the uh, yeah, you don't you don't have one of the new paddles in your hand, but you did try the new technology at at, at Brad's. Uh, tell us about the closing and, and tell us about the new technology with uh, Yola. Yeah, the, the clothing line is is fire. I love the colors, you know, you can coordinate coordinate a little bit more, but yeah, they sent me a bunch of stuff, just been rocking it the last week happily, and then yeah, tried, a, tried your new paddle and loved it. Absolutely loved it. I mean, it is an absolute rocket, which, you know, the modern game, um, for me, I'm not the biggest guy. If I'm going to hang with you guys, even in drill sessions, like I need something that, that packs a punch. But I feel like compared to, you know, I was using the, the Selkirk 002 a little bit before. I feel like there's a little bit more dwell time on the paddle. Uh, definitely feels like a little bit more spin. 
So a similar feel as far as power, um, but I would say just a little more forgiveness for blocks, resets. Um, and just I, I prefer that dwell time to, to shape the ball. I think I'm more of a creator type of player. So being able to try some of those flicks and more creative shots and feel confident with that, I think is really important, you know, for my game. So I think it's a, a great paddle for, for a lot of reasons. I think you're, I think you're totally spot on. I mean, take a look at Eric Lang, right? Guys in his forties, obviously he's working his ass off. He's gotten a lot better the last six months. Shout out to Travis rude, who is his coach, uh, based out of Portland. Love me some T Rav. Um, yeah, a lot of good players in that area. Oh yeah. That, that oh yeah. Rude coaches as far as I know. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, our semifinals match, uh, he's getting a lot more. Eric's getting a lot more on the serve. He's literally teeing off on the third ball. Third ball is bigger than mine. It's bigger than Zane's. I don't. I don't think it's as big as triple decks. But uh, <laughs> but the ball is getting up and down in a hurry. The hands have always been heavy. He, he used to play with the head paddle, uh, and he was playing just fine with the head paddle. But I think um, you know, for like a big guy, he was probably playing like a little too soft with it. He was lobbing a bit more. Uh, dropping a lot, and anytime he's in transition, I think uh, just with the head paddle, obviously I would assume head paddles have uh, come a long ways, but um, he was with head like a year and a half ago or like a year ago, and uh, he was just blocking a lot in transition, and now he's scary from all different areas. And honestly, it's kind of brought in like this whole new singles aspect into his game where not only is it benefiting him in uh, men's, but it's going to benefit him in uh, mix as well. Um, well, I mean, you look at you look at that that semifinal match. I mean, the game plan going in was we knew it was going to be like a, a lot of drive and crash and a lot of short points just with the conditions and being a little colder, the ball flying. We wanted to return to uh, to Eric to not deal with his poach and figured that his drive wouldn't be as dangerous as Zane's. And after a first few points, looking at the pace, the shape on that thing, like, I remember away from there. was like, I think we need to just go to Zane, like. Right. Which is, it was kind of crazy. You look at the kind of Zane's singles background, how much spin and shape and pace he hits off the ground. So for us to switch strategies, obviously speaks to Eric's game, but the, the paddle is is making a difference. Yeah, and uh, I I personally believe uh, it's the best technology out there. Just like what Kmac had uh, touched on, kind of get best of both worlds. Plenty of pop, whether you're trying to redirect pop or you're trying to generate pop. Also, plenty of dwell time as you're hitting drops, as you're as you're shaping dinks. Uh, and then with the carbon fiber face, um, I mean like the amount of grit that I'm getting on my drops, the added dip that I'm getting on my serve and on the drive and on the shapey dinks on, and you know, I used to kind of guide and steer the backhand roll anytime I was hitting a fourth ball or if I was like hitting a backhand roll speed up. Now I'm able to really drop the tip, get a lot more shape on it and trust it. And I think that's, that's a, that's a word that K Mac used as well. Like you can just trust the spin, trust the dwell time and know that, you know, there's going to be some added dip at the end um so i think uh once that new puppy comes out here very very <laughs> soon uh there's going to be a lot of uh very happy customers so shout out to yola for sure. thanks for taking Best care of my boy uh and thanks for taking care of the camp business and also decking out uh, our guy ethan and uh maddie ice who came back just taught a camp with came back <laughs> tell us about that camp in phoenix yeah, so we did it at uh, at Pickle Mall, which is, you know, I heard about it, but it's absolutely huge facility, really nice. Courts are really spread out. It was busy. Looks like they're doing well, had a lot of customers. Um, but yeah, we had uh, had 26 campers, went really well. Um, the <laughs> only thing was tougher for me to uh, project the my voice kind of had a little bit of an echo. So uh, a little bit hoarse today, first day getting back. But uh, yeah, fun was had. I think people learned a lot. And I don't know, I think, you know, a little bit of a shout out to our own camp company. I think our program's unique. We had some some really high level players in there. Um, one of Brad's buddies, Sean, was a former professional baseball player. Um, but then we had some some beginning or, or, you know, newer players as well. I think our program that kind of Tyson and I have, have written, I think it does a great job of you know, make sure we, we hammer home the fundamentals, but we give enough high level stuff to really keep the 4.0 plus people engaged and, you know, asking questions about some higher level tips. So I thought it was a good balance of making sure we didn't overwhelm, you know, people that are maybe just starting out or a little bit newer, but definitely still giving, um, you know, some of those details that are huge. Once you get to the 4.0 level, even if they seem like minor details, that's what you really need to not hit a ceiling. So I think it went really well. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, taking a look at our last couple of camps, taking a look at the camp in Mexico, uh, not to push away the lower levels at all or the 3-0 players, but it seems like we're just getting a wider mass of 3-5 and above players, um, you know, which is 
which is always great. Um, for all the viewers out there, if you guys want to sign up for a camp, get over to my website, TysonMcGuffin.com. You can get KMAC, uh, or you can get McGuffin. Um, I'm teaching about five camps this year. Kyle's teaching anywhere from 20 to, to uh, 25. Uh, the first half of the year's schedule is on my website, so get over there right now. Take a look. Sign up. Um, you guys can sign up Fill for day up one. You can sign up for building a soft game or maybe your soft game is already dialed uh, <laughs> and you want to learn how to build some weapons and find some different ways to dictate. You can sign up for day two. How funny is it? Crank too? up that dial. Yeah, we get, <laughs> we get a lot of people that sign up for day one and then they end up calling Emily late that night. They and get, say, hey, they get can one I, over. Can I, do, can, can I do day two? And sometimes we're not able to. So look at the right. look at that ahead of time. Uh, but yeah, there's a little bit of a price savings too, I think, if you sign up for right. your two day ahead of time. But who uh, wouldn't want to sign up for day two when you show up day on. one and you see K Max <laughs> fresh fade, right? And oh, he, yeah. he is just giving the pie. Whether it's uh, you know, dinking up the line, <laughs> dinking cross court, okay, give him the whole book. We got, we got to talk. Don't just about, give him a bite. We got to talk about the fade. I don't know if we can get there later with our trip there, yeah, but go ahead. But no, it was so cool. Like we had, first of all, I think Tyson threw out a message on Instagram saying, "Hey, I need a barber that can come to the house," and we waited, and it happened to be a barber like reached out who's like won awards, has another. How cool! You've gotten so many cool barbers, but yeah. uh, anyways. Says he can come out huge late. Huge fan. Huge fan. Watches the pod. Right. Um, knew about Mac. It was just hilarious. So comes out, like hooks you guys all up. Who all went? Like you, sure. Peter, and K-Mac. K-Mac. Yeah. Um, and so like K-Mac goes in. It was like, everybody was kind of joking about it leading up. And I, I honestly, I didn't know if you were going to pull the trigger or not. And I think I got busy like having dinner and talking to Ben or I can't remember, right. whatever. And came back, you walk out and you're like kind of beelining it a little bit. And I was like, I was like, oh man, it looks good. But like, you looked kind of like, I've been there before when you get a new haircut and you're like, no, I right, need to like right. really let this sink in for a second more. <laughs> I like no, to no. comment on it. No, but it, it looks tough. Like, it looks yes. good, but it's a big change thank you, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. No, so, it was tough because so, I, I wasn't sure how I feel about it. Honestly, Tyson was like, yeah, we're all going to get paid. And I didn't know <laughs> if I was joking or not, right? Like, oh, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to like hang out hide in the corner like no you're up you're next and so jacob uh, barber you know i totally hit it off with him total pro just oh, put yeah. myself in his hands Guy's an artist. i really liked it but you know i didn't know how i'd feel about it right and i really hit it off with him and so i didn't want to be like that guy that he's you know total professional does this great job and then i seem like wishy-washy about it uh to come across as rude but take me a little bit of getting used to um but i I think I'm I'm totally won over now. I'm probably gonna always this this is the new K Max style. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The question is, what is what does Callie think about it? No, she likes it. She likes oh, it for good. sure. I think when it first came out, he put a bunch of product in it and oh, he yeah. didn't want to go too short for me because I think he could tell I was a little nervous about going too short. Right. So when he put product in it, you know, I've got the the salt and pepper already <laughs> going. It was like really, really spiked high. And like when I first looked at it, I, I thought I looked like one of those like like military characters from Street Fighter, <laughs> which is that enormous like, like GI spike. Joe style. Right, no GI Joe look for sure. <laughs> but once, like, I took a shower, was able to mat it down a little bit more, a little bit more symmetrical. I'm, I'm, I'm one over now. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, talking about Peter being witty. So so Pete in, in K Mac, I'm not I'm not saying this hurt your feelings at all. Uh, <laughs> no. You know, Peter Peter called K Mac the Silver Fox. The silver right. Fox. You know, it's funny because Matt <laughs> Matt has you know salt and pepper hair too, and so Peter calls Matt the Silver Fox as well. It's really funny. <laughs> the guy is he's got uh, he's got plenty of Came goodies. Some more polish coming fox. out of that mouth of his right, carrot right. top. <laughs> no, I, so I, I I like you know I know that Matthew you know him and I are friends. We We've hung out uh, quite a bit, really like each other, but apparently like Matthew does like an impression of me, like as I'm teaching, um, the P train did a pretty good job of as well. So those guys are buddies, but I think I'm, I think I'm eccentric enough to where I'm starting to be, uh, Trying to be teased just a little bit, but the impression was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and, that's and, when you know you've made it. No, you know? like right, when right. stuff now, like that pop. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. It's funny. I, uh, at at Brad's party, <laughs> uh, Stone, I had told Stone that, like you're going to be in my corner for the next ten tournaments, and and yes. and Stone's like, hey, if there's one person that always has the hands going, it's, <laughs> oh yeah, it's freaking K Mac. Okay? The hands are always the going. hands aren't <laughs> moving. The brain's not working for me. <laughs> Have to talk uh, about the hands. Too funny. Stony baloney. Stony baloney. Uh, okay, so let's see. Boys came, or uh, first of all, uh, yeah, racket and paddle show. Uh, shout out to Yola and Skechers for taking care of me. Did some content with both. 
uh, the racket or the sorry, golf and golf and golf racket and show. paddle, yeah. Golf and golf and paddle, golf and racket. Um, Massive. yeah, it was a huge turnout. Uh, probably like eighty percent golf, twenty percent racket. I think yeah. it was their first year or second year doing doing the racket show. Uh, where, yeah, where I think it? so. It was in Orlando. Yeah, and oh, nice. um, I think. Yeah, I mean, the golf show's been there for a really long time, I believe. But yeah, they just added in paddle because they realize it's kind of the same consumer. Uh, and so a lot of the, I think it's the same, similar consumer, but then also a lot of the golf brands are getting like, or there's some sort of like connection there um, where they share um, some of the people like creating both or products for both or something like that. So, but there was a whole pickleball section in the back and there were two pickleball courts. Uh, it looked like, uh, I think Acrotec or the pickle roll, right? Acrotec came yep. in, rolled down some of the uh, pickle roll courts, if that's what it's called anymore. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's pickle okay. roll. Okay. Um, and then it's Skechers, correct? Yeah, Skechers had like a really big activation, a really or a really big booth um, with all their golf shoes, of course, and then some pickleball shoes, and then they had a, a separate little activation right by the pickleball courts that just featured pickleball. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. Like their whole team, like their shoe designers, their, I mean, they had like a huge staff there um, meeting with a bunch of buyers. So, you know, obviously like Dick's Sporting Goods or Macy's or whatever, right. Would go to the show and like take a look and see what product they want to buy. So There's people from all over. Kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it was cool <clears throat> doing that. And then Yola also had a little small uh, booth as well. So it was cool to see some new products that they had like yep. kind of surprised us with this little uh, paddle. It's not the pro paddle. It's not the Magnus that will be coming out, but it's a, it's a lower level version. And it was really cool. It was like a matte gold with a, with a lion face on it to match right. your tattoo. <laughs> and it's got like the Tyson signature. It was, I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah uh, so yeah, took that to the court. You did a little pro exhibition or just played, play with the pro. Yeah. Yeah, so with Skechers, we took um, uh, like what six or seven journalists or six, yep. or, se- uh, six or seven. Um, you and Catherine. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And you just take them out on the court. Take them out on the court. We did yep. like a little hour clinic with them. Um, and then also it was kind of funny. So first time doing doing content with Yola, like this is our first time doing content with Ben. Second day doing doing content with Yola. Um, but uh, it was kind of funny. So we're in the studio in Orlando. Ben John. Ben Johns, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. BJ, okay, <laughs> who, who I have not beaten for a very long so time. And even this. though KMAX haircut was the best looking thing on Sunday and I was hoping to get a couple wins for him, I was unable to. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, if Ben would just play his side of the court and let, let Colin play. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, part of the shoot, we were doing action shots and uh, the Yola people didn't trust like their their underhand <laughs> their toss, <feed. laughs> trust their feed. So here I am like mm. feeding balls for Ben. He's feeding balls for me. And there's like hilarious. this. I think I have some there's video like this, of that. We got to insert that yeah, here. There yeah, was, there was sure like this clothes hanger or there was like this rack thing. And they put like a big old like fur mat in front of it. And basically anytime you fed a ball, Ben or myself had to like try to hit the ball into the mat. And like, and like they're having us taking like, cause you were driving. Like, right. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, Ben yeah. and I are taking full cuts at it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm going to say that even though Ben kicks my ass every Sunday, <laughs> I was the better tosser. You know? no, I was going to say, I, how's his feet game? You know, Hey, hey <laughs> we know I, everything else I played the better teacher, you know, you know, Ben <laughs> yeah. was a student. <laughs> You're more cooperative. <laughs> right. I was, I was much more cooperative. You know, Ben's, yeah. Ben's feeding very competitive feeds. Yeah. I feel uh, like Ben's probably not feeding balls that often. No, I'm just, <laughs> just a guess. I could be wrong. But anyhow, <laughs> he just always has to win. Yeah, right, yeah, right, you right. know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun getting to spend some time with that man. Um, so that was like day one, did some content with Skechers, uh, had a couple meetings, did the exhibition, uh, did some content at the PGA show with Yola. And then went to, um, top, golf. Went to top golf with the Skechers crew, played some golf that night. Oh, yeah. Super fun. Everybody's Crazy. drinking. Some of their Skechers like team, right. Which is totally makes sense that like, develop their shoes and all of, and work for the performance side. They're really good golfers. Yeah. Like one of the um, kids that was there was like, I think, I think his they, dad's actually a sponsored senior pro right. for golf. He, right? played, and, he played college golf. He's yeah. A, he's a total character. Was, I'm trying to think he of He was name. banging the ball. Like he probably hit five in a row that hit the back fence right. at top golf. And he, like, and like he was it was doing, no big deal. And he was doing like a helicopter swing. So he wasn't yeah. even taking it back. He was going <laughs> up this way and like not even freaking looking at the ball and then banging at 250. Here yeah. I am like, you know, 
But he was he was so funny. He was so nice. He was helping all his girls, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, don't step step this way, make sure. And he was like, that money though, and he was just like making no, everybody feel good. Character. Oh, he's hilarious. Christy probably had the best swing there. <laughs> she did. Um, she did. <laughs> but uh, yeah. and then let's see here, and then on that very last day, played some uh, played some doubles. Uh, in Orlando with a little group that I like to play with. Um, Donald Young came out. Oh, that, 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 that was my first time playing some playing some doves with uh, D.Y. Uh, D.Y. Mm-hmm. has come a long ways. Also great seeing him at tournaments. He was at the uh, Such a nice guy. Desert Ridge tournament as well. Yeah, yeah, great guy. Yeah, super down to earth. Very humble guy. Like, I hope uh, hope he does really well with pickleball. Seems like he's getting a lot better. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And uh, it was kind of cool. I was kind of picking his brain a little bit. <laughs> came out and I was telling you just about like the tennis scene, how those guys get paid, right. how they, how they make it and all that. He gives you all the behind the scenes. Dirt. He does. Yeah. He does. <laughs> and, you know, kind of, uh, uh, I asked about like what, what coaches get paid, like what percentage of your prize money goes back to your team versus, you know, how much, how much you're making. Uh, Tyson's trying to pay me less. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> He's like, Whoa. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay, right. Come on. Right. This isn't, well, hey, okay. something, I, <laughs> something I did tell something I did tell K Mac is I said, hey, you know, if I if I don't win this weekend, your ass is sleeping outside. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not paying for your food in the monster. Okay, right? and you're and freaking sleeping in the pool. Phoenix. Okay, um, I got to be in the fight more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. pay me like exclusively, just like a tier system, right? Yeah, Keep right. me motivated right. every round. A bonus, for, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy like, about tennis, like structure, man. crazy about tennis. I mean, obviously, like once these guys make, you know, top hundred, top eighty. You know, they're they're guaranteed uh, to be first round of all slams. Uh, if you make a first round of a slam, it's like 80 K. Yeah, know? 80 to like 120 um, something. And uh, you know, some of the um like top ten players, like why they play two fifties is because they'll get like an appearance fee of anywhere from like fifty to like a hundred K just to show up. And, and on and on yeah. top of that, they freaking get a buy first round. With that buy, they get, you know, points. so many points. So you're you're continually like you're like he said you have to try to fall out of the top. Right. And it's just, it's such a survival mode to freaking make it into the top hundred and you're not making anything for the longest time, nor do you have brand endorsements. And then once you get there, once like you you're set in stone, yeah. you know, I mean, you're not yeah. set in stone, but it's just, it's much easier to like, right. you know, live and, and, uh, get first round buys and, uh, get some points and all that. And then, you know, obviously too, like the four grand slams making 80 K per grand slam is not too shabby. Um, yeah. it's probably uh, why so many of those guys that are in the, you know, two to 300 ranking, they just grind for years and years because if you can get up to that hundred level, they know they're going to have a certain level of, of stability. So it just it keeps you trying, even if you know <laughs> it is still a ways <laughs> away. Hopeless. I mean, I don't know the difference. You know, a three hundred player versus a one hundred player, and you know, is it just consistency or is there a big difference in firepower? But you can imagine where it'd be tough to, to to walk away when you feel like you know your moment's just right around the corner. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I think. Uh, Credit to Pro XR, like on that Friday, uh, DY, Donald Young was was playing with a Pro XR and the guy's grips almost in Western. It's like in semi right. uh, or it's like in between semi and Western and the face is fully closed. And like the amount of torque and shape he's getting on the serve and the drive, the ball is getting up and down in a hurry. Uh, so it just comes to show like, you know, Technology. I mean, take a look at Desert Ridge, like Ben is probably banging, you know, not. 90% of his thirds, you know, Eric drove 95% of his thirds. Um, just the game is getting faster. The ball is getting up and down in a hurry. It seems like paddle, techno- uh, paddle technology is getting like that much more advanced. So cool to For see. Sure. Um, well, I mean, it's not just, you know, the technology, but then also just the way that everybody's playing. I think it makes it a lot easier or quicker for a high level tennis player to come on over and hang right away. I think, you know, a few years ago, with old paddle technology and kind of the style, I think it would have taken them a lot longer to really fine tune all the finer points of the kitchen line. But now you can win a certain amount of points just being athletic, not even having to change the grip that much, hitting with a bunch of shape on your drives, crashing in right after. And like now the transition zone is changing so much the way people play. People can be more offensive off the line. For a lot of the, you know, the top players, it seems like in transition, just that like, like, drive and close or those high intensity volley drills that you'd see in tennis where you're volleying and closing in after each one. That's a lot of what like trans transition zone play can look like in pickleball now. So that's true. I really think between all that, it does not need to take high level, you know, tennis players that long, maybe like six months to a year. Whereas before I think it took a lot longer to really be competitive with some of the top teams. 
Just keep swinging. <laughs> Swing away. Just keep swinging. That's what Ty's advice is always, you know, hit the ball harder, Dad. Yeah, right. Harder. <laughs> harder. That's, harder. All, that's harder. all you have to do. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's see here. We had Jame. We had Marcel Chan, big tall drink of water. And we had <laughs> Clay Dog. <clears throat> Um, and not a bad group, at not all. a, not a no. bad little group. You know, Clayton won the uh, singles points draw. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know if he made a uh, main draw of men's or of mix, but, uh, yeah, Clayton 17, 18 from Ben met him the first time in Los Briles while we we're teaching a camp there. Guy's got a lot of game, heavy hands, um, likes to ask a lot of questions and he's a, he's a <laughs> sponge, total sponge. Yep. yep. Um, and anyhow, it was great. It was great having those guys. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back here. Cause the last two times, Jame, yeah, I'm me, Jame, who the man is never serious. I mean, my gosh, uh, the last few times he was in Coeur d'Alene, he's made, uh, two finals now in singles. I'm going to quit giving that guy advice. Boom. I am. Jame, I'm, or else we're taking a slice. I'm going to start kidding. taking a percentage. Okay. I mean, prime example. Okay. He's playing Ben. He's up 10-9 game three. He told me this after the match. I mean, looks like he's on a vacation out there in in game three, right? Smile ear to ear. Smile ear to ear, laughing the whole time. And 10-9, he's he's, right before he serves, he asked somebody in the crowd (laughs) where he should serve. They say forehand. He bangs the serve out to Ben's forehand. Ben misses the return. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Sounds just like Nick Kyrgios. Nick Kyrgios, anyone's tennis garden, BMP, a couple thing. years ago, same thing. He's no asking way. somebody front row where he should pop the serve. Stop. <laughs> stop. That's a little. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's so funny. Uh, Jame came back to the pro lounge after that, and he said, someone asked him, they said, like, what, what changed? Like, what, what was different? And he's like, just came from Tyson's house. Just came from Dyson. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. You get to see that top level for a week. Uh, he's a scary man. Right. It, no. it, it was Poor uh, guy too. It, uh, you put him through the gauntlet here. Yeah, like he I mean, was, he was we, we beat out. the hell out of those guys. Like <laughs> practice from five to seven fifteen. Uh, yoga right after hot yoga for like an hour. Went and saw Craig for an hour and a half. Uh, cold, cold plunge morning and night. Some days we did two days. Um, and all three of those guys were total yes guys. Just what I need in life. People that say <laughs> yes. Um, and kind of funny too. Yame's interview uh, with the PPA, not on court, but as he was walking back, um, they were like, "Yeah, so you know what is what has changed?" And Yame's like, "I'm a dog." Um, uh, are you? <laughs> Say you don't you don't see me, but now you do. No, you do. <laughs> uh, oh, and then and it. then then also too against Jay, uh, uh, you know he's laughing ear to ear, talking to the crowd, getting the crowd all fired up. I mean the guy is freaking great for pickleball, right, Yame? Oh, yeah. yeah. And sure. um, uh, Jay had said, Yame, you don't want it. And this was like a couple points before. K Mac K Mac knows it. what I'm talking right. about. Cause, cause, yeah, I think yeah, yeah Yame missed a, he missed a serve. So Jay, like jokingly, he doesn't want you know, it. it's a tense moment. It's right. the end of game three. <laughs> he doesn't want He's it. like, yeah, he doesn't want it. Says that to the crowd just as a joke. And then the next point, you talk about it, Tyson, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> Jay has a high ball. Why he went through it. So there was probably four high balls where Jay decided to test Yame's hands. And Yame has got a set of hands on that man. That Spanish man uh, can do a lot of great things, but he's got some heavy hands. Anyhow, uh, he pokes it at Yame's feet. Yame does like a no look. Uh, Jay's got a high ball. Uh, pokes it at his feet. Yame like somehow gets a gets a paddle on it, hits it hits it for a winner across court. Yame looks at him and says, "I don't want it. I don't want it." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will have to say, though, I thought it was refreshing. It was just nice to see. It was nice to see Jay out there having fun with singles right. again. Like right. I, I, I don't know if, if for whatever reason, maybe I haven't just seen him there as as often. But to no. see him like cracking jokes in tense moments and like playing well and like Jay, yeah, Jay, I, no, it was Jay's, it was cool to see. I, I was happy to see him back. Jay is back reborn. Jay is for reborn. Sure. And credit to to Vulcan because. I think their old technology didn't suit uh, a lot of the players and there was some right. more advanced technology out there and the new carbon that Jay's playing with, I played him in singles on that Sunday and that was the first time that Jay has beaten me in a long time in singles. K-Mac was there, Jay played out of his head. Yeah. Nice no, and we, we mentioned wow. this even in the semis. I mean, I know he was playing to the crowd a little bit, but in between points, like I mentioned this to you, I was like, Jay's got that look in his eye. Like you can tell like he's been working on his game, like super determined. Um, goes a long ways and yeah like I, I scouted tried to give you like a decent game plan to to play Jay and I'll be the first to admit like 
like I was wrong. Jay played amazing. Like we thought we'd test the forehand a little bit more on the pass. Um, his footwork was dialed. Like he looked like a complete player and you see the, you know, the frame, the six, three frame and, you know, his athletic ability when he's got it all working. He's a scary man. Yeah. He's, he's had, he's had a good couple of weeks, uh, you know, made the semis of masters and men's um, made the semis of singles in this last tournament. Uh, and, you know, talking to John May after the match, uh, Jay, Jay should have won game one. John May ended right. up, ended up winning right. game one. Jay won game two. It was tight in game three. I think it was like 11, eight or 11, nine. And yep. John May said that Jay probably should have, should have beat him. But, um, yeah. Cause I think Jay rolled, rolled John May in, in game two and kind of let up, uh, you know, had, had a bunch of game points in game one. So it could have been a very different story, uh, in that final. Yeah. But yeah, Jay and singles on, on Sunday didn't miss returns. His ability to like shape the serve now, um, shape his fourth ball. Like I was able to get some drives down and he was like catching the outside edge of the ball or like volleying back behind me. Just seemed solid, disciplined, didn't miss. Uh, there wasn't any, any dips of level, of, uh, dips of level as well. It seemed like, you know, last year, like the last couple of times I played him in singles, um, it wasn't a roller coaster by any means as far as his level, but there definitely was some dips. And this time around guy played super solid, did not miss. And just his passing shots, like what he's doing with his wrist now, how he's sure. able to shape the ball with that new Vulcan, how he's able to differentiate like the two E and the one E nobody else is doing that. I, was gonna say, I mean, for God's sake, Pat Cash back is back alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's so visually disguised playing him too. Cause like, you're trying to get a read on his pattern. You're like, well, maybe he takes the one more cross court and the two up the line, but he even is varying that pretty well. So he was a tough, uh, tough puzzle to solve out there. No, he, he certainly was. Certainly was. And I think uh, he's going to have himself a good year. Uh, I think he's yeah. like dabbling around with, with different men's partners uh, or, or maybe Pat just couldn't play this weekend. Uh, him and him and Callie um, ended up losing to, to Jame and Jill this, this last right. weekend. I think that was definitely a, definitely an upset. Um, but, uh, no, but John, I think people don't realize Jamais doubles games really coming, coming along as well. Like it's not going to be long before you see him making pretty deep runs in my opinion, in both mixed and men's once, you know, he gets a consistent partner and, you know, gets the chemistry going, but I, you know, better than me, you've been training with him, Tyson, but not just a singles guy at all. Right. No, for sure. And I mean, uh, take a look at last year. I mean, not to discredit Wyatt stone, but Wyatt stone, you know, it's probably like a top 20 guy. And hasn't really broken through. And what they were able to do against the Johns in yep. uh, Daytona, 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 yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I always want to say Delray Beach, Day, Daytona, Daytona. God, that place Your is favorite. Place. That place is just <laughs> Scumville. Hey, white the beach redneck, is nice. white <laughs> redneck, and NASCAR Central. <laughs> the beach oh, is yeah. nice, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they ended up beating those guys. Uh, I mean, obviously it was early on in the day, as we all know, uh, Benny and Colin or just Ben in general is pretty vulnerable early on in the day. Um, but yeah, they were able to get a win over those guys and, uh, no, John Mays is stud. Um, let's see here. Okay. So also while we're at the PGA show, I got, uh, fitted for some clubs by Cobra. I want to give a big shout out to Ricky Fowler, Rod Fowler. I've had Ricky's dad in my camp a couple of times. Uh, K-Mac has, has met Rod. Kind of a cool yep. story about Ricky. Good unlike guy. unlike most golfers, Ricky was a, a motocross guy early on uh, from Southern Cal. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> Ricky's been with Puma for how long now? You know, long uh, time. Yeah, I think I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, probably towards the beginning, I would think. I, I feel like I. I feel like the whole looks like the crazy clothes and the, the pink and yeah the, the orange. orange and that stuff like seems pretty much from the beginning, but right, I could be right. wrong. And, um, uh, so anyhow, so Puma has, uh, partnered up with, with Cobra and it seems like there's some, uh, clothing companies that, that, yeah, do, that they don't like, make clubs. Like Ping, I feel like works with a specific clothing. Like it looks like they're, it seems like they're like partnered up kind right. of like, so if you're, uh, this player, you use these clubs or vice versa. So, uh, but yeah, kind of cool. Um, yeah, Cobra, super cool company. I mean, man, like the slickest looking clubs of any uh, manufacturer there. Like, yeah. what's it called? The um, the uh, speed or like the yeah yeah, uh, yeah. dark dark yeah. speed. I dark think speed. is what it's called. And, and the clubs look dark speed. I like sharp. That. Yeah. yeah. And for it, me, I'm like, hasn't been know. helping me out the last couple of times. <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, ever since I've been taking lessons, gosh, my golf game has just plummeted. 
implement truly implement- I can you're two in your head I am I am I'm, I'm, implementation I'm, dip or how do you say yeah, that Im- I can't, I can't implementation dip there you yeah go. I can't say it. And, and I'm all in my head I'm worried about my grip I'm worried about the take back I mean for god's sake just <laughs> smack the ball and lead with the pecker right my, bring the hips <laughs> first my mom always, always used to coach me in golf or like she tra- like give me lessons or I actually she put me with a pro for a long time when I was little and then I remember afterwards like she gave me so many things and then I get right up to the like tee box and I'd be thinking about like 10 different things I gotta fix and then she'd say like pick two pick two and so so I just narrow it down to like two things and then and go because like yeah you're just it's too much it's way too much all so Meg, I didn't know you golfed growing up. What's what's your golf game like now? <laughs> she's got a, well, she's got a sexy she's little golf side. Uh, she does. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I should maybe bring it out of retirement. But no, I played <laughs> oh when God. I was like uh like seven, eight, nine, ten. Like that was yeah. like the heavy stuff. And I would play with a there was a pro that would work with me and I, I enjoyed it. It was super fun and uh but it takes time, it takes money, you know, it's all the right. things. So I have a really nice or it, they used to be, I mean they're a little dusty now, but generally, generally nice set of clubs that yeah. now I need I need some cobra clubs. So. She needs some cobras. <laughs> need to upgrade. Um, but it's funny, I have to use like men's clubs because I'm too tall for the oh, women's like that, when we go to rental. Got clubs, those long yeah. legs and that and that long torso. <laughs> Which women's clubs, you know, have a little more give. A little more flexibility right. to them, right. so I'm always just using the. It's all about the flex and the shaft. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it is. It is. Anyhow, so so got yeah. fitted for clubs. Probably the shittiest day that I've played golf. I'll tell you what. Um, and actually, the guy that I've been get, I'm getting lessons from at the Coeur d'Alene uh, Resort, his name's Ty. Yep. Uh, greatest guy. So he's been working with me at Golf Island. Um, at the golf simulator place. And uh, actually, uh, CDA Resort sent all their golf pros to the PGA show. So Ty was there, was was texting. Getting on the education. Yeah, was getting on the education, uh, getting me dialed in. And uh, he also came to my little Skechers clinic. Oh, yeah. And uh, came to like the Yola booth and kind of checked out all my stuff. And then also, I ended up texting him during my fitting. So he ended up walking over. And so... Here I am, like literally, I have never been that nervous, right? On the stage. And, and so and so most of these uh golf companies had like a driving range. I mean, like this this warehouse at the Rin or like this like Massive. convention center is huge. Massive. So like like a wide range of these golf companies, you could uh check out their clubs and then go to the driving range uh right after and like hit some balls right so cobra checked out the clubs and then go to the little uh golf range and met this guy named brandon who's actually from mercer island or from uh, bainbridge island where uh pickleball was founded uh super nice guy huge mariner fan huge seahawk fan he actually played uh uh college football for university of washington back in the day and um uh anyhow so then he got into golf (laughs) and um so I'm like, you know, trying out all these clubs, right? And I can't hit a freaking ball straight. <laughs> There's people all around me. Uh, Meg's like taking content. <laughs> I'm like shanking balls left and right. Ty's like trying to coach me. And then Brandon's <laughs> giving me advice. But like the coolest thing about the whole fitting thing is that they can like change the weight distribution of the club. They can change the face. Yeah. So he was constantly like making adjustments to the club based off of my <laughs> shitty swing. Yeah. And tweaking it a little yeah, bit, but yeah. it was working, and, the, and somewhat working. It's, well, to the to the point though, like everybody thinks, like, oh, I gotta wait till my game is better to go get a set of clubs fit for me because I wanna I wanna be better. But realistically, like, if you have a decent or a semi shitty game, you can go get clubs fit for that particular level that you're yeah. at and it might help you get to the next level or at least improve your improve yeah. your game a little bit so, so yeah he could like add weight he could take weight off change the angle change of, changing yeah. of the face yep, yep. yeah it was super cool yeah. anyhow so that took about 45 minutes sweated through my shirt <laughs> that was probably the first time that Nerves. i felt like that much anxiety in a very long time <laughs> um and uh yeah and then when i got home from desert ridge there was a big old box from cobra yeah. Uh, sitting in our office and pulled out the clubs right away after you know yeah. Sunday of playing two finals, flying flying all day. We get home at like one a.m. and we're opening golf balls. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking swings in the in the living room, <laughs> working on that swing, working on that, that swing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the clubs look super slick. Uh, and then that so nice. uh, today is Wednesday. Monday uh, ended up getting my bottom veneers on and was on anesthesia. And you bet your ass, directly after I went right to Golf Island. <laughs> 
tried out my clubs and literally broke my heart. I, I walked into Gulf Island with that brand new Cobra bag, feeling like a stud, <laughs> dusting off my shoulders, letting people know that, hey, I am here and I'm going to be bashing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bashing the shit out of this ball. Yeah. Come to find out, track man, um, shame on you, just changed their software and they weren't picking up like the software wasn't picking up the black clubs. It's only picking up silver oh, clubs right now. Really? So yeah. So it's not picking up black or white clubs. And so for Dang the first like it. 10 balls, it was the only 10 balls that I hit freaking straight all day. It wasn't registering like, like the distance of, you know, like the yardage. And if I was hooking it or whatever, uh, it, it felt very straight and it, and it felt like it was 250, you know, as it always does. Um, and anyhow, so halfway in, I, I'm like, bugging the guy out the front and I'm like, Hey, whether it's my swing, it's my club, something's going on here. And she's like, yeah, I think it's the software. There's been glitches in the software. Shoot. And so she ended up giving me a set of silver clubs. So, Dang it. Um, you couldn't even bro, use I know, oh, right? No. I mean, I broke my heart. Down, yeah. You broke know what I'm kind of worried about with these new clubs is that he's going to expect us to fly with them. We I already am, have I like am, a billion I'm, bags. I'm, and now I'm bringing we're them. Freaking golf clubs. I'm bringing them. But yeah, this, this black like leather bag. Bag. The luggage. This, this black leather bag is slick. <laughs> it gonna, is. It's nice. I'm going to wrap it up in like five condoms anytime that I'm... <laughs> Anytime that I'm traveling. No, we have to just, have a just a like travel, the hexacore grip. A travel bag. Yeah. And you know what he will do? He won't fly with them himself. I'll have to, I don't know. Maybe we'll ship them. How about we ship right. them? <laughs> um, but I always tell my wife, I say, hey, you can you can play golf with me under under one condition. Short skirts oh, stop. or or <laughs> leggings. Okay. You know, simple as that. Uh, <laughs> right? You, if you're if you're gonna come out, show it off. Okay. Uh, Get me all riled up. You know, I play I better. The outfit and I, the clubs you know. are half the battle, right? You got to just look good, feel good. And right. And, and freaking yeah. hips first and, like and bang that It all falls in line. It does. It does. You know, all, all falls from the same tree. It applies to pickle too, you know, for, for sure. all those pickle watchers out there. Look good, play good. Hey, easy. <laughs> uh, okay. So Desert Ridge, uh, first and foremost, love this man. Uh, it was It was my first time, you know, using Kyle in my corner the first time. Um, you know, he's watching matches before, giving me insight. Uh, you know, I, I guarantee he did some uh, video analysis leading up as well. Deckel and I were probably like the first people, the first players to to get to Phoenix. I ended up getting there Thursday. Deckel got there Sunday morning. Deckel and I probably gave, probably played like thirty games from Sunday up up till Thursday. And uh, also got some singles in. Shout out to Brad. Um, uh, slummed it at, at at Brad's from Friday through Wednesday. Um, his his house is a complete dump, <laughs> as we all know. Yeah. Not probably the nicest house. Probably the nicest court in in Phoenix. He lives he lives in uh, Paradise, Paradise Valley. Valley. Uh, Brad has taken my camp like ten times now. Brad knows the camp curriculum so well. <laughs> we could probably start. We could probably, teach it. We could probably yeah, start yeah. paying him to be a lead and <laughs> we could teach our camps. Right. Uh, and uh, talk about a guy that's it. just a junkie, like loves it, soaks it in. Um, one of the nicest guys you ever meet came to Mexico with us. Uh, yeah. His his daughter, Harper, and my daughter, Banks, are like best friends. His wife, Yolanda, is a total princess. She's like Good. adopted bankers. Like she banks is like totally at home there. Loves Brad, loves Yolanda. Just like Harper is like her sister. She was like in tears every day we'd pick her up. And that was so sweet of them too. Like it ended up being that like she ended up spending some days over there. Harper got to miss little school and they would like play. I think one day Yolanda took them to like get little glitter strands put in their hair. And like, they always look, they look like twins too. Like their hair color is the same and it's pretty cute. So, yeah. yeah. So um, obviously came back, you've, you've commentated, you've taught camps, um, you know, you have won an MLP title. Should have won two, you know, not to, not to bring Don't it up. Don't remind me. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I thought you were spot on the, uh, the whole week, you know, kind of, kind of leading up, like you were in my practice corner. I got confirmation from Deckel, um, asked Deckel, obviously if it was cool to have you in our corner, Deckel, uh, was, uh, you know, more than about it, Megan as well. And, um, anyhow, so just, you know, what were your thoughts on, on coaching me in that position? Did you like it? Did you, did you totally hate it? Um, but yeah, just, just give us a little insight on, uh, cause I think as of now, you're probably the first player coach that was out there courtside looking slick in that fade. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, I think it's a unique time for coaches. I think, you know, doubles is, is the more popular event still probably with, the uh, with pickleball, but if you're hired just by one person kind of awkward, cause you're really coaching the team. So I think 
any any future coach in pickleball really needs to make sure that both players are cool with it. And I'm glad that you ran it by Deckel and Megan. I thought it was really invaluable the the few days that I had with you guys just to watch some of your practice matches. And you know, it's a totally different mindset. Um, you know, coaching pros and top level pros than than teaching camps or even just training people to play at the pro level. There's no you know major major holes you know in the games of top level pros. So you're really just thinking. How can your skills be as complementary as possible? How can we manage risk differently in matchups? Um, and I think that's my biggest strength as a coach. Um, not just saying, hey, look at a top pro and saying, this is what you need to do to get better, but really looking at uh, players and how they can play better together, how they can match up against different teams and, you know, just use their strengths. So, um, you know, a couple of things that, that we talked about with uh, with Deckel and, and you is, yeah, we want you guys to, to bang the serve, bang the drive, do the shake and bake. You guys have a big weapon there. But maybe in some of the early rounds, we don't need to go for those cheap points because if we have a big advantage at the kitchen line. We can play a little bit more discipline. That was the key in some of those matchups early on, whereas, you know, uh, some of the keys in the quarterfinals and the semis were be as aggressive as possible in certain times. Um still getting to know Megan and, you know, and just, and just how to, how to communicate with you guys. I'm going to get better with that. She was a complete sweetheart, but you know, I learned a lot just in, in a sense, separate from the X's and O's, just a lot of like how I need to be as a coach during timeouts, you know, the energy that I need to maintain the positivity that I need to maintain and just, you know, being that leader all the time um, and just kind of being a rock emotionally uh, in addition to all the X's and O's and all the pickleball junkie stuff that I like to do. So it was a blast studying film. Um, it was a challenge and a lot of fun, you know, pivoting our, our game plan in real time when something isn't working, you know, how to change that up um, and to get everybody on the same page. So it's something that I will get more efficient with. It's something I will continue to improve, but definitely just the experience I had with MLP, I think really, really helped me um, just knowing how to communicate two pros to top level pros because the way you deliver the message is just a little bit different. Right. Right. No, I thought, I thought you were totally spot on the whole weekend. Sure. Yeah. Whether it was X and O's, it was being the hype guy. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, being the rock emotionally, like you had just mentioned or changing the game plan, uh, right then and there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of faith in you. I think, think my wife has uh -huh. more than enough faith in you as well. And yeah. uh, anyhow, buddy. So just, uh, just want to thank you and no, and so know that we're just getting started. <laughs> oh, for sure. For yeah, sure. and I, I just no, think good, it's, good weekend, but more, more is to come. Yeah. yeah. No, I just think it's so cool to see, like, I mean, just everything in pickleball that's all come together in this in this way. But like, I don't know. I think just going to this last tournament and having like a full team and just everybody hanging out. And it was one of those things where it's like, everybody got along so well, like Peter and Ben and you, and like, I don't know, like you guys really could talk pickle like the entire trip, but it wasn't like, you know what I mean? It was just so lifestyle. It like yeah, it wasn't, fit, fit wasn't in. Forced. No, it wasn't forced. It wasn't like, okay, now is time. We got to talk strategy. I mean, there's probably nights where 10 PM you guys are, are reviewing something else, you know, but it was just, it was just fluid and nice. And I don't know, it was cool to have the whole team there and joke. And we laughed to tears and like, I don't know, it was just, it was cool to see. And I really, really enjoyed, I think PPA, although the desert Ridge, like we're clearly outgrown that venue. Um, it was cool. They added the player box because it, we truly could have the team on court with you. You right. felt like they were behind you, not just the coach or not, you know what I mean? So I just, I thought the whole thing was, it was cool. It was a yeah. cool experience. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this year, knowing that we have a ton of work ahead of us and that it's going to be kind of a crazy travel year, but knowing like we can all be there helping each other and doing it together. I think yeah. it's cool. And Meg awesome. and I already have our, our superstitions. Perfect. We'll yeah. Yeah. He's made got sure <laughs> I was sitting in the right seat every match. <laughs> yeah, me. Make sure I had a rain in me. Yeah. Get, right. uh -huh. dialed. Like, smoke can't smoke have down that rain and get yeah. dialed. <laughs> I always tell yeah. people I'm great at pickleball as long as I'm not the one playing. So, there you go. Um, it was yeah. a good weekend. <laughs> Love it. And and little do the viewers know this man can still play. He's mm. down in Los Breles playing in the mornings with us. He was totally able to hang and he's probably winning mix. 70 to 80 percent of his game. So uh, <laughs> not do, a bad do not, yeah, I was, do I was, not I believe that he uh, does not still have that ability because he, <laughs> he very much does. And he's got that new sword in his hand. So watch out. No, watch out. Um, and but, the haircut. So. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, just get the, the guy on the PPA tour, right? <laughs> 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 Premier. Oh, 
premier MLP yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> right, get him a get him a main draw. He, yeah, right. he, he, just, he know, should I'm not have to go to college. MLP in- injury, right? Yeah. Where I just have to go full player coach mode and just you know yeah, put yeah, myself yeah. in put there, me in. throw him in the mix. <laughs> Give me my fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes of fame. That should be like a, a little <laughs> caveat rule that you know you can throw your coach in if you need him. Right. right. <laughs> He's the alternate, the secret alternate. Right. right. <laughs> and he and he looks the part. Yeah. Viper Corp pros, Yola gear, new sword, new Pet haircut. Vipers. Okay, sign him up, coach. Get it dialed. Get it dialed. Oh, um, also, it was uh, it was awesome to have my therapist there, Ben. Uh, big. Huge shout out and thank you to Wild Health for taking care of me the last last year, year and a half. Um, and cool uh, Nate there. Yeah, I had life. I had some of the uh, I guess some of the people from Wild Health that are on my team yeah. at the event uh, at the event as well. Uh, there was a football player that played for the Vikings. Do not remember his name. Um, he came and showed up. He's also with Wild Health and okay. trains at at Nate's little high performance center there in Chandler. Um, also there was a, there was a baseball player that showed up and watched me play. So it was cool to meet some of the other athletes that are also with wild health. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, so obviously I, uh, went on a fun little journey over to Kentucky, uh, a couple weeks ago or like six weeks ago. And, uh, I've told everybody and their grandmother and their, and their dog about it. If you know what I mean? Uh, K-Mac, K-Mac definitely knows about it, but, uh, anyhow, so it was cool. Uh, to, to, yeah, to have Ben meet my whole team, to have him come to his first, uh, you know, pro tourney and thank I, I can't thank that man enough. Yeah. Uh, if you guys get a chance, that book right there is called the anti-hero's journey. It's Download a, it's it. a great read, download it, check it out. Uh, Ben talks all about his story and talks yeah. all about just being a, being a grateful man, like the, and the changes Crazy. that he's made in life and yeah. uh, hero to zero, if you know what I mean, service over power. And anyhow, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is in yeah. this world. Yeah. You got to check it out. And for sure, it was cool to have been there. Cause I felt like obviously the whole wild health team works like so closely, like they're close friends and they also like gosh, the things they put their own bodies through and testing stuff and all the things that's crazy. But I think, uh, with Ben being there and really getting to experience like the full time singles day and the start and stops and the long, long days and the, the nutrition and what you're able to eat and how much time you have and all of those things I think, uh, is integral for them to understand kind of what you put your body through in any given day. And then also then rolling into the mixed day and seeing like how your body responded from the day previous and like the body work we got and all the things. So I'm just excited to see what they're going to be able to do with that information. You know, hopefully that they'll be able to kind of take that because it is different than probably other sports and other um, other applications that they use or with their ap- athletes currently. So for them to be able to see it firsthand, yeah. I think will help help lead us in a different direction, even even more so. And like just the detail in which they understand the body and the things going into your body and the rig- like the activity that you put it through and like how it all relates. I mean, it was literally like a foreign language listening to them kind of geek out over it was some of that. Surgical. But yeah, but it's amazing to me, you know, what they're doing and how cutting edge it is and how it's not what every other person out there doing. And so I think it's really cool. And for people that want to check it out, they have even like a base level from like, you know, some like me who's not an athlete, just wants to like get better and improve my life. And then there's, they have tier packages all the way up to like for full blown athletes. And uh, so pretty, pretty cool what they're doing. Yeah. And basically it's uh DNA testing and there's a saliva swab, there's a blood sample, mm, tons of blood tests and metabolic testing, pee in a cup. And yep. based off of that, they can prescribe you based off your DNA, prescribe you the right supplements, exercise program. Right. Um, and they've yes. connected like then even like things down to like your neural pathways and how those need to be, fixed as well like in order to like do have these other physical um related things like inflammation and you just i mean how it all like goes together and how they really have this like global view of the body and in yeah. high performance is pretty crazy yeah, yeah. It, was my, it was my first time meeting ben you know and he's just raving about you know the whole team and just what what great human beings they are and he was like oh yeah and side note they're all geniuses, which is a nice bonus too. So right, right. Yeah. a bunch pretty of, cool group of people, a bunch of smart dudes who have all played, you know, not yeah, all, but all some athletes. have played like X, X right. college sports. Yeah. 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 A bunch of, bunch of high level athletes. So super cool. It's amazing. Um, so happy to have those guys. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Desert Ridge singles day ended up making the semis. 
Um, lost to Fetty in the semis. It was cold that night. Uh, ball is moving fast. Uh, obviously, Fed is with Yola as well. Fed is playing much better with that new technology that Yola has produced. Best paddle in the game. Um, I had one game one. Uh, it's two all game two. Rain delay. Not going to lie. I feel like it kind of killed my mo momentum a little bit. Um, and uh, I, I think something to note is that what I'm able, and KMAC notices as well, is what I'm able to do on my backhand return now. That used to be kind of like my weaker side, or anytime I was on the left, players would hit like a higher, heavier serve or, or over to my backhand side. And I just, I, I was uh, hitting it flat. I wasn't able to penetrate the court. Now with that, with that new paddle, I can trust the spin a lot more. I can really go after it. Something I was telling Jace Edwards this morning, uh, as we were training is, uh, is he also noticed as I was playing singles that I was just knife in the knife in the return. Um, but, uh, but a technique or, or something that just makes sense to me is kind of cutting like the butt of the ball off or cutting like the, you know, cutting 25% of the butt off, but I was trusting going through it, keeping the wrist nice and cocked, pushing from the shoulder. But I mean, honestly on, on singles day, I was hitting my freaking backhand return better better than my better than my forehand return, and and that's never happened in like the nine years that I played professional pickleball. Um, now, granted, I ended up spraying some returns kind of late in game two against Fed. Fed raised his level as he always does, um, and uh, level kind of dropped a little bit in game three as well. I kind of sprayed some returns, but I thought overall. I played very, very well. Um, obviously, Fed was able to beat Yame in the finals and singles. Looks like it was super tight, like 9-8 game three. Uh, a, a bunch of cat and mouse points. And uh, there was one point in particular uh, in game three. I think it was like 7-3. It made top five on, on Sports Center. Uh, long cat and mouse points. Uh, <laughs> Yame like poked a ball back behind Fed. Fed threw up a lob. Yame probably gets a little too cute with that. With that drop volley, as as K Mac knows, <laughs> he loves the drop volley. He loves that. I mean, he, he would rather volley. hit a hit a ball on a dime and 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 dump it as a dump little it. kiss <laughs> than oh, to freaking sure. smack a winner. Uh, anyhow, Fed ran it down long. Uh, cat and mouse point again. Then Fed poked it back behind him. Fed got the crowd going. Um, anyhow, six singles match. Both those guys are playing at a super high level. Um, but something that we all three experienced was come Friday. None of us did a whole lot mixed. And why? It's because we were all trashed. Bodies were totally trashed. I'm 34. Right. Yame feels like he's 16. Uh, Yame's what? 24, 25. I think so, yeah. Uh, Feds, I think, is uh, 27, 28. Anyhow, it wasn't just... I think Yame's, I think Yame, Yame's late 20s also. But okay. still, I mean... But yeah, was it thinking, wasn't just, it come? just me that was trashed. I mean, all those guys were all beat up. So I think uh, uh, something that uh, could definitely save all the players or, or that could just save singles players that want to play all three events is moving to progression draws. Um, yeah. and, and, um, or, you know, maybe, maybe players like myself just don't play the PPA tour stops. Maybe we stop playing singles, uh, during PPA tour stops and we just bank on, you know, playing well, making it deep in the PPA cups and the slams, uh, obviously cause there's more points and more on the line, but, um, so uh, just playing singles then on the progressive, Cups and slams yeah. and not playing singles on the tour stops. Yeah. Tour stops. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So uh, guys, let me ask you this. If, if all the tournaments went to the progressive draw, would you think it would be better to keep it two out of three or best three of five? Yeah. Two out of three. Two I mean, three. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, so I, I played 10 individual games of singles on Thursday you know, let's say that's if you go lot. five, if, if you go five on a progressive draw and you play all three events, that's like 15 games. Yeah. Granted, you know, it's five games of mix, five games of right, wins. Right. Um, but, but if you went I, five and, and I like, well, the, I like three. the two out of three, I think championship Sunday should always be three out of five. Um, you and, dabbled with that at nationals yeah. and it was really taxing on your body, similar to, to what a normal, normal draw would be. So I think. Doing the two out of three is really the only way you see benefit. The progressive two out of three. That's the sweet spot. All right. You I heard think it so. here first. Yeah. I think so. Um, you, and you and you kind of get a glimpse of MLP where you play, you know, all, all three events. You have to be sharp in men's. You have to be sharp in, uh, you know, uh, singles and mixed. And, um, you know, something that uh, maybe lower tier players don't realize is that when you're seated one through eight, and you're playing your first round on Thursday where these other teams have been playing, you know, Tuesday night, uh, Thursday, 
Um, you know, like there's going to be some upsets and there, and there's, yeah. and there's going to be some different people winning. And, um, well, out the gate, you're seeing a top, what, 16, like, or what are you starting around 16, right? Uh, yeah. Cause you get to buy your round of 32, which is on round Wednesday, of 32 Wednesday. is Wednesday. So yeah. you're right, right into 16. And so like, yeah, you're fresh and you're playing a, a, a good player right off the bat. And then the very next day you're playing an even better player right off the bat. So yeah, I, there's maybe a little bit of a, you know, I, I guess, I mean, would you say that's kind of why you saw a little upsets, even with like Ben Kong and Nong. things, because you're getting an early match because singles is always first, right? Even though it, it's progressive, you still start singles, then mix, then men's, even in the progression, right? There's never, yeah. it doesn't change the order. Correct. So each day early, you're seeing, you know, your, your next opponent. And yeah. so I think it's going to, I, it, well, we've already seen it would create some upset. I think two major key factors are you're saving players' bodies better with right. progressive draws. Uh, seems like schedules each year are only getting longer. There's only more tournaments. And on top of that, for fans out there, uh, for that schedule to come out the night before mm -hmm. and tell you who's playing on championship court, who's playing on grandstand, who's playing on grandstand two, easier for viewing purposes, easier for fans to follow. It's more organized. I just think that's... That's the way to go versus cramming everything in, um, you know, uh, rolling it, next, cramming next, everything next, in yeah. throughout a day. Yeah. Um, also, too, I think, uh, you know, uh, the PP has, has obviously done a great job with with all facets and uh, and we've come a long ways as a as a sport. But um, uh, but yeah, I think just starting matches earlier, starting at like 8 a.m., even if it is cold. I mean, how many, I mean, I don't know, like when I was at Masters, I was fortunate enough to play most of my matches from like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm home with my kids by four or five and, and the venue is packed. Right. And then I'm, then I'm, you know, I'm like having dinner by six or seven and I, and I, and I turn on PB TV and literally, like the women are out there at 7 p.m. There's nobody on championship court. Right. Nobody's there watching, and it's ice cold. And so I just think we could do a better job at starting earlier and showcasing the matches that they want to showcase with people being there. And, um, yeah, just getting the day going sooner. Easier said than done. Obviously, they have amateurs and all the above. Um, well, the other component that people don't think about, too, is body work and, and recovery, right? If And I, I see this more, you know, with that, uh, what's the... Uh, tennis like docu series that's out Breakpoint. Breakpoint, yeah, yeah. Like Breakpoint. you see, like how mental that is when those players don't have time to recover, and that's all they can think about is, oh my gosh, I'm playing again in this many hours, you know. And so, um, I think that it's true. It's true. It's tricky. Like when stuff may maybe ends at seven thirty or eight. Like my ability to get you massage um, is is tricky, and it's hard to like move that around. So right. knowing that you're done at a decent time and you know, that we're able to schedule that. And then also it, like you said, it's been really nice to be able to let people know, oh, okay, he's going to start his singles match for sure at this time. And then he'll have his men's or his mixed match around here. And then there's a hard stop. So he'll definitely not play men's until after this time frame. like people's ability to watch and sponsors ability to be there and all the above has, has been really big. Right. No, I, I mean, I gained an appreciation for just how much the grind is, you know, being with you there in the morning to evening. I'm not even playing, but I found the days really long and, you know, you're tired, you're beat at the end of the day. You're having to do recovery stuff like really late at night. And, you know, with talking about coaching coming into the sport, the other advantage of the progressive draw is scouting. Like it's really nice to know, okay, these are our three opponents tomorrow. Let's Let's watch a bunch of film. Let's come up with a detailed game plan. Um, it's a little tougher to do that, you know, uh, when you don't know the opponent, you know, round to round. So I think it just professionalizes everything. Last argument for the progressive draw would be singles day. Now, I love singles. You love singles. But there were a ton of times where I commentated, you know, singles matches, some of those early rounds, and, and hardly anybody's there on a Thursday. But um, if you do the progressive draw, I That's think you're going to be a lot yeah. more even so distribution true. of fan interest <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, no, and so Sunday. spot on. No, for sure. A hundred percent K Mac. When is this man not <laughs> spot on? Okay. On the freaking money. Uh, okay. Mixed day. Ben and Anna Lee. Um, all right. Well, sorry. Anna Lee uh, rolled in singles. Uh, still playing at a very high level. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like she's going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> uh, but mixed. We had, we had Pablo and Tyra. 
Or sorry, yeah, Pablo and Edda. Edda, 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 Edda. sorry. Edda. Pablo and Edda had two match points. Came back if you want to walk us through that against Bannon and Ali, not on championship court, maybe on grandstand, could have been on grandstand too. Yeah, I mean, I know for one of them, Pablo had a had a serve that he missed, right? Bobby! Take down, take down Ben and Anna Lee, miss your serve. That's, that obviously doesn't feel great. And I think he missed a missed a volley on another one. Yeah. Maybe maybe a, a tougher ball for sure, but but it sounded like it was somewhat makeable. So kind of surprising, right? Like everybody's raving about Pablo's game as they should, but it's been more singles and men's doubles. We haven't seen a lot of lefties really have consistent results in mixed. I think it puts pressure on the the female player to play the left side, which is problematic a lot of times, um, but certainly not a match we thought would be really tight. Nothing against, you know, Ed and Pablo. They're both playing at a high level, obviously, but uh, yeah, they, they had some chances. And uh, something that we were kind of talking about at Brad's house earlier on in the week was, yeah, we just had, hadn't really seen any lefties break through and mixed. And here we are, Desert Ridge, and we had two of them. I mean, obviously, Pablo and Etta didn't break through, but came very, very close. Um, Augie Gee, the man yeah. is here. The yeah. man has arrived. Uh, it's a real played, deal. Po- played with Tyra. They had a tight. Uh, they had a tight game too with Annalie Ben. They ended up taking out Lucy and Matt in the uh, in the in the quarters. Um, Augie's a stud. We got some practice in. What was that Tuesday with Augie and Craig? Uh, Viore model, Craig Johnson, probably one of the nicest guys in the game. Best smile in pickleball. Best smile in pickleball. For sure. For and if sure. you, and it, best aura. Just I best mean, aura in pickleball. the guy is just a total unit. And if you see Craig's dad, <laughs> like we said last episode, and you know Craig, you would be like, oh my gosh, you have to be Craig's father. Spitting okay? image. Spitting image. I have still yet to meet this guy. Oh, I gotta meet. Me got neither. Okay, man, neither. Give, us, give us a breakdown on Mr. Gee. Hope I say oh, his name. Man. Is it, is it uh, yeah, so or watched him play some some it's practice nice. matches against you guys. Augie. You and Deckel yeah. was very impressed. Scouted their their match, you know, against Tyler Lung and Todd Foat um, right before they played you guys, and I kind of ran through those guys. Just as smooth as can be. You can tell smooth he's a really operator. cerebral guy. <laughs> plays with a calmness, um, but just you know, he's big, strong guy. Looks like he's about six two. Kind of perfect, perfect frame. Got great hands, but really shapes the ball well. Uh, just just a lot of things to like about his game. Um, and I mean, I'm a little surprised he did as well as he did with Tyra, but it was just a matter of time before somebody like that has a breakout tournament. Um, and honestly, for me, it looked like a premier level player already, which is crazy to go from not playing MLP, even at the challenger level, to where like, I think he looks like a premier level talent right yeah. now. Um, that's a that's a huge jump that a lot of people never make. AZ Pickleball League, yeah. straight to Premier. <laughs> Sign you, the man <laughs> up. Do you think, I mean, I guess this is kind of similar to, um, oh my gosh, the gal you played with in MLP, the sub. Um, uh, yes. Uh, Veronica Vaughn. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kyle, came back, help me out here. Uh, from Austin. Miami. She, no, she's not from Miami. She's from, she's from Nashville. Yeah, but she played on Miami. She yeah, subbed yeah, in. Right, right. Uh, Allison. 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 There you go. What, so, what's her last name? I'm blanking on it. Uh, well, I'll come to it. But Dang it. Allison. Allison, we love you. Yes, we do. <laughs> I was going to say, I felt like maybe Augie's in that same boat where they're secretly good and they just, they, they're not over-respecting the players or the talent in front of them. And so I think that almost gives them like this covert edge a little bit because they're going out and just playing and not, they don't have like too much respect for the players. I, I could be wrong there, but like the way that Augie plays is not timid whatsoever. And it's like, he doesn't have that like Bible in the back of his head. Like, Ooh, don't go there because of this, that like he's trying different things and doing things that maybe other players with this like backlog of, you know, memories this, and things, right, you know, right. you know, I don't know. No, maybe no, I mean, sure. that's a, you know, a, probably a basic concept, but I feel like that's what makes some of those players a little bit more dead. Now does that change over time? Maybe, but uh, especially for the beginning, I feel like, you know, Augie's ready to step out there and face anybody. He doesn't care. Yeah. I think for, for players like that to break through, you obviously have to be determined. You have to, you have to trust your stuff and, and you can't look at things you don't have control of, which is, you know, Ben or Anna Lee or these big figures that have been winning triple crown since day one. Right. Right. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I think Augie and both Allison did a, did a very good job of just focusing on one thing they have control of, which is herself. And, uh, 
And something that came out, can I talk about is 10% delusion, baby. <laughs> putting <laughs> yourself on a pedestal, putting yourself up there. That stuff goes a long ways. Belief, belief and having confidence like that, especially if you have not broken through, I think, I think is the key to, uh, making big runs like that. Okay. Mac, well, that's, right? that's kind of what Meg's referring to. You know, when you've been in the game for a long time, watch the top players, you, you maybe, you know, psych yourself out or get a little intimidated or over respect people that have been doing it for a right. long time. So the one advantage that some of these, you know, tennis guys that are coming over in the last year that are somewhat new, they, they've seen how much the game has changed in the last couple of years. So the players that have been around forever, I'm sure they have a certain level of respect, but they're like, you know what? The game's a little different now. I've achieved a lot in tennis or whatever, you know, my background is and, and they're ready to make their splash right away. So you need that confidence. You need that 10% delusion to tell yourself before you even hit a ball, Hey, this is my day. I'm the guy. And if you're not willing to talk <laughs> to yourself like that in a way you've already lost. So it's just, it's so important right. to have that mindset. Spot on mama and spot on K Mac. Why not me? Right. <laughs> not me. Come on. Why not me? I'm the guy. Absolutely. Okay. Come on, and, that, and that's what I was, you know, I was saying a lot in your box. It's something that I use for myself when I always play best is I would say, you know, it's your day. This is your day. Your this day. is your time. Right. And so just that idea that um, you've put in the work and now it's time to capitalize on it and karma or whatever you want to call it is on your side. But <laughs> just that belief me? that it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. Right now is my time. This is my day. I think that can push you through a lot of those tight matches. Yeah. It's something, a reference that K-Mac was using was spot on. And I'm going to, I'm going to steal this is, uh, you know, we're, we're playing Matt and any, any kind of used it all throughout men's day. We're playing sure. Matt and James, uh, even though it was a one man show, right? K-Mac. <laughs> just uh, ask Matt. Right? Just ask. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll just ask up. Maddie. Okay. But something he said is break it open. Okay. I mean, you're almost there. You're like halfway there. Break that mother effer open. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and I was using that same stuff with Deco. I'm like, now's the time. Right. Why not us? Break it open. And, um, yeah, having little phrases like that, that can just put yourself up there where you can trust that you're automatic, especially when like the going gets tough and it's tight. Um, belief is everything, you know, and, and something that Dane Ginrich talks about is 1% mindset, you know, yep. like yep. having that little added ounce of confidence, yeah. uh, can be your best friend and losing that little added ounce of confidence can freaking be your worst nightmare. It's true. Well, and how often players will, you know, spend hours and hours drilling, trying to learn a new shot or, or, or whatever, just anything to get that edge. And you forget about the mental edge, right? Yeah. So like, that's a huge part of the game. We should be just as focused as getting that edge mentally as with our physical skills. And sometimes we forget that. So mixed day. I mean, I mean, K Mac, as we all know, it was driving crash city, windy oh. day, cold, <laughs> probably one of the coldest days there. Uh, shout out to, uh, Elise Jones, who, um, you know, not, not going to downgrade y'all at all, but, uh, just with that softer version of, of the paddle that she was using last year, uh, she was blocking a bit more. Obviously she would never miss. She's diving for balls. She was scrappy as heck, but you know, let's just say that, you know, maybe she was a little one dimensional just with not having as much offense and, and really not having a, uh, whole lot of sting power. She's using that new carbon paddle. If she was still with Yola and she's using the new technology right now, she'd be even in a better spot, if you know what I mean. Um, right. But uh, but yeah, she was bringing the offense. Like the hands look, looked a lot heavier. She was still just as scrappy, didn't miss. And CG, for gosh sakes. <laughs> I mean, he was like banging thirds, banging fifths, banging sevens, coming in, crashing, speeding up balls off his shoelaces, making it messy. And she was like lighting him up. Like she was bringing up his, his she fire. Was, like she, she was like... It, you know, just jacking him up. And one female and that has the best dangerous. energy out there yeah. is, is Miss Jones. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. She brings it. And and just brings that heat. and seeing CG, that like look in his eye and that little smirk, that little smile, like he was he was eating it up. Like right, yeah, right. soaking it in. Right. Yeah, Love you me. don't see a lot of the females be it like a clear emotional leader for the team. True um, alpha. Maybe yeah. Anna Bright. She's got that yeah, fire yeah, as well. Right, yeah, right. Maybe she sure. comes to mind, but yeah, perfect partner for Connor, just building him up the whole day. And I'll be honest, that was the toughest match for me to coach on because it was so bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Connor was getting so much dip on his drives. You guys are volleying fine, but every now and then the bottom would just fall out of the ball. 
And that's a very missable volley, even when he's driven, you know, three, four times in a row. So we we're trying to return to a lease to not deal with that Connor drive. He was even getting pulled out of position <coughs> and still being able to get a volley behind him and still rip a two hander and get the point back to neutral. So uh, it was a lot of, you know, almost reckless, but I mean, they, they pulled it off. So not throwing any shade by any, by yeah. any means, but certainly a tricky match to coach for when there weren't a lot of kitchen rounds. No, 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 for sure. And, um, uh, obviously with having Megan, in, oh, obviously with having you in our corner for Megan and I, I think things are only going to get better. Uh, Megan sure. and I, you know, had, had a nice little run at masters, made the semis. Uh, so looking forward to that partnership and looking forward to, uh, Mesa coming up here in a couple of weeks. Um, well, just shout out to Megan in general. That's a couple of tournaments in women's where she's really starting to solidify herself as, you know, really a top five women's player, which, you know, last year I would say, you know, you saw the talent, you saw the, the hands and the power, but she's a pretty complete player these days. And you're seeing the consistency in her women's results as well. No, no, for sure. And, and, and something that I, yeah, I mean, I think what you had just mentioned, like something that I saw late last year was that she was tough as heck. She had easy pop. She was making a lot of balls, really linear dinking. Um, and her and her ability to really use her hands and to dictate in women's and in mixed, I was a huge fan of. And sure. uh, she's even like a better version of that this year. So uh, cool to see. And and yeah, I mean, her, her and Etta. And, and I mean, Etta, she is just as smooth as they come, huh? Come on. And just, yeah, well, you talk about that calmness too. Like she never seems phased, like just stays right at that. Like she's up enough, but just cool as a cucumber. And yeah, eat a lot of stuff to like about the way she competes and just, you know, her physical skills. For sure. Uh, okay, so number one on Sports Center, Jimmy Hemi. Oh. He is him. For God's oh, sakes, twice in her. Did, didn't he? Yeah, he, he had two he had, times had, had, that day. He had one against Colin so like, early on in the day. Uh, championship geez. court. The guy, the guy's just a main event guy. Okay, yeah. you put him on Championship <laughs> Court, and he's bound to do legendary it's like shit. That shot where you're like, he'll never be able to do that again, and he does it twice in a right. day. Main so event, silly. Hemi. Silly. Uh, but yeah, so in that match against uh, uh, Vivian and Thomas, who are also like have taken bronze, you know what? How many tournaments in a row? Like six or seven tournaments in a row now. I've kind of like solidified themselves as like the third best mixed team. James and Anna have been taking uh, you know silver for the last couple tournaments as well. Um, but yeah, so James uh, Thomas hits this little rolly dink, hits it back behind James. James is like moving laterally, but moving back. His feet are all contorted. Flea flicker with pace, ATP, shows zero emotion after. It comes to show how <laughs> locked in that man is. And I swear, the it, like like the temperament and the persona right now of James and Anna, they're just slayers. Like they are, they look like train killers out there. No emotion. And I guess if there's any emotion, it's Anna getting more than fired up. I, I dealt with plenty of that in the uh, <laughs> PPA master semi. And uh, yeah, I mean, both of those guys have taken, or both of those uh, uh, folks have taken their games to a whole new level. I know Anna's working with the pickleball trainer, Catherine's, Catherine's old trainer. Uh, okay. She's, she's, putting in a ton of work in the gym. Um, obviously they're in Boca there. They have a, a very high level group to play with probably, probably the, uh, the best training, you know, uh, group that we have in the country so far. Uh, you have Andre Diescu, you have the waters, you have, uh, the Johnson's Dylan, uh, is basically living at J dub's house. Um, <laughs> like every other week now you have Jimmy, Tyra, I mean, Tyra, Tyra. I mean, it goes on and on and on for gosh <laughs> sakes. Uh, Pablo um, Fed. Pablo Fed are thinking about moving up to Boca as well. Um, but uh, yeah, even though uh, they are playing at a high level, we all know what happens on Sunday. Uh, Anna Lee and Ben freaking locked it in and not throwing any shade James and Anna's way. But I think it was like eight, three and zero. And in game three, Anna and James were, were chuckling a little bit just based off of the level that Anna Lee and Ben was producing. Scary when they, well, no, I mean, it's, it's unreal. I mean, you just mentioned James and Anna, they're really solidifying themselves and creating some separation right now of being a clear cut number two team. And then you see the difference, <laughs> even though they're getting better in all these ways, you still see the separation between them and Ben and Anna Lee, especially in that second and third game. Um, I mean, it's just absolutely scary. You look at the, the, the offense that Gnadowicz has, and, and just everything that Anna Bright brings to the table. And for that not to even like 
push Ben and Anna Lee when they've got it dialed is just is just crazy to me. Scary. We call it, we call it surgical Sunday, right? <laughs> ben is a surgeon come Sunday. You know, surgical. I mean, and, and I and I mean, I I can't tell you how many players in the pro lounge. And even even told Ben in the pro lounge if he was even awake Thursday through Saturday. The man really didn't even wake up until Sunday. And when push comes to shove and he's got to bring it, we all know the guy's the ultimate goat. He does it better than everybody. And uh, teach, the bear teach and me out. how, Ben. Yeah. Okay? Teach me how. <laughs> well, he looked vulnerable, right? He, like, he, he looked, looked vulnerable, vulnerable all week. Like losers in singles. Like uh, they have a couple tight matches in mix. Like almost losing the semis in men's. But come Sunday, there's something about Sunday. He just finds another gear. I don't know what it is. Right. Yeah. Surgical Sunday. Do you ever think too? Like, I don't know. He's, like, I feel like sometimes it feels like he's like playing around or like maybe messing with new technique or new shots or like trying some different things. And then obviously when push comes to shove, he just like streamlines it. Lock in mode. Yeah. Lock in <laughs> it's mode. like he's like practicing live right. in tournament right. or something. No, I, mean, I think you're right. Like, I think he knows, like, for lack of a better term, like his B game, where he just forces you to try to create, can beat so many people, you know, at such a high percentage of the time that there's times where he doesn't play that, like, super disciplined. He'll he'll get a little more creative. He'll, he's trying more with the two-handed backhand. He's rolling some dinks now. But I think he picks his moments where maybe they've got a lead um, or it's a team that maybe he's not – as worried about, you know, uh, upsetting him uh, to try a few new things, but he always has that, like almost that B game that he knows how to, how to dial in. And, and that beats 95% of the teams anyways. No, for okay. sure. Okay. Men's day. Decky and I broke through triple deck. Uh, we, we, we better have broken through because we, <laughs> we were there, you know, I was there Friday. He was there Sunday. We probably played 30 games of uh, doubles leading up. Got a got a ton of touches in. K Mac knows this. We were not sharp early. Uh, it, it was a little suspect uh, Sunday Monday, um, and we got our crap together and found a great version of ourselves. Found a good level, and um, yeah, I think uh, something that we do great is that we can we can mix it up. We can play both sides. We can drive and crash. We can use the drive to like assess and uh, be a bit more like methodical coming in. We can speed up from the kitchen line, but we can also grind and put a lot of balls in play. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, take a look at Ben's game. The guy can win with his C game, with his B game, or his A game. Uh, he's got different tools in the in the in the toolbox, and it seems like teams that are making the podium, they're not just winning one way. They have a they have a wide range of of ways to play or ways to win, um, and. Um, you know, the, the day didn't, didn't start good. Uh, we lost our, I mean, it's, it's what 10 AM Saturday. It's like 45 degrees out that bulk, that, that Vulcan ball is flying like a missile. We play West Burroughs and, uh, our guy, Roscoe, 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 Roscoe. <laughs> Looking all spiffy and is all white. Looking the all head spiffy, headgear, you know, hair. Kind of a, you know, kind of a tricky, tricky first bank city. Oh, the capability of those guys. Yeah, no, those guys uh, drove through us. It was scary early on. Once we uh, buckled down, made a few more balls, come game two, game three, used to serve a bit more. Um, things uh, things definitely favored us. But started the, get, started the day off by, by playing a three-gamer. Uh, next match we play Craig and Augie on championship court. Love me some Craig Johnson, but we definitely did a little ISO, uh, uh, CJ. If you, if you know what I mean, uh, <laughs> kept it away from Augie and, and, and Craig, I'd say that in the nicest way, brother. <laughs> and, uh, and then let's see quarterfinals played, uh, played Matt and, uh, Matt and James, uh, we're down what one seven. Uh, yeah, one game, seven, game, game three, three, go on a 10 point run and you're got down in game two as well. Down, down in game two. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And, um, yeah, we just kind of locked in came K Mac gave us some good insight, uh, you know, in our, in our corner, uh, played the X's and O guy, but also was like a total hype guy. We, you know, we were down in that moment. We kind of knew the X's and O's, but it was a matter of just raising the energy, being a bit more fiery out there. And sometimes when you know the strategy and the energy is low, sometimes all you need is just to freaking be a dog out there and let your opponents know, hey, I'm not going down or uh I'm not going down easy, you know? And and that that fight or flight mentality, 
showing good energy um, sometimes can can raise the level, and it totally did for us. One game two, down one seven. Game three, started using the drive and the crash a lot more, and we snuck away and stole that thing. And something that's <laughs> something I told Deckel at ten seven. I said, steal it. Now's the time. Break it open and Take freaking it. steal it. Okay. Love it. Love um, it. Well, and I think you know, to me, to me, Tyson, that was that was the type of match where I think it makes sense, you know, for top teams to to just have coaching in general in the sport. Uh, you know, one of the game plans that we talked about in that match was we liked the pattern of you just dinking cross court uh, with Matt Wright. You know, your forehand dink doesn't really break down. You've been doing that a lot, and it, even though Matt's a good creator, it's tough to create offense with a uh, big deckle in front of you, right? The man can clock counters and not an easy guy to attack. But, you know, in that match, we started getting Matt a little too stationary, staying in that pattern. And the reason we liked that pattern is we wanted him to be more athletic and kind of match you for the lateral movement. So um, just having an outside set of eyes, I was able to see that. We were able to talk about on that timeout, like, all right, we've got to move around the spots more, not because we want to go to James. James was playing great and, uh, you know, very dangerous player. But when we're willing to dink to James and move the ball around, it forced Matt to start shifting. It forced him to start moving laterally more with his dinks, which we ended up getting a couple of errors. And so it's one of those things where, you know, if, if the roles were reversed and I was in that match and you were coaching me, you would have saw the same thing. But it's tough sometimes when you're worried about, playing and making shots and competing and staying locked in to always see kind of what's transpiring with those patterns. And it's such a pattern game um, with, with really the high level pickleball being won and lost, you know, at the kitchen line. That's so true. Uh, Semi's match played Lang and uh, Zany and I'm not going to lie. It was a game of tag. Okay. <laughs> I think Deco got to body back like four or five times. Mm-hmm. Zane hit a ball at about a hundred miles an hour at my face. Luckily it uh, clipped off the tape. Um, and you know, uh, I understand that, uh, there's different ways to speed up and stuff like that. And if that suits your needs, great. Um, you know, it's, it's not something I have in my arsenal. I mean, I, I do have a, uh, higher, higher pace speed up, kind of more of like a bailout speed up <laughs> in my package. It's definitely not that hard, but, um, yeah, that match was a total mess it is what it was. It was cold. The ball was flying. Right. There was, there was three brand new, uh, YOLOs out there. And as we all know, the ball comes off very hot off of that paddle. We had Zane's pro XR. That thing gets up and down Jeez. in a hurry. And, um, honestly, if, if, if that match right there doesn't tell you that, that the sport has evolved and the sport is, it's much different than 2016 or, I mean, even two years ago, um, you are crazy. Um, <laughs> something that was funny is that, is that the kitchen posted like a side by side video. It was the funniest thing of, of a match with like, it was Chris Mills, um, uh, puppet master playing uh, Wes Gabrielson and somebody else. And it was from like 2014, but it was a side-by-side of that match and, and our semis match. <laughs> and it looked like a different sport. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> completely. I mean, li- I mean, obviously, 2014, like the hand battles were only like one to two balls. Nobody's driving. Everybody's dropping, dropping in transition. Dinking is much more lifty. Um, you know, our match, there was like, what, three ball dink rallies and then, uh, pull pull the trigger and pull pull the trigger and pump. Uh, nobody's dropping. Um, so yeah, it was a messy match. Declan and I ended up running away in, in game three. And, uh, but no, I mean, uh, kudos to Zane and, and Eric. I mean, that's Eric's first PPA medal. Uh, I, I, I think ever, um, obviously Zane was a PPA stud in singles for the longest time. Doesn't play singles anymore. Uh, I think that was Zane's first PPA medal in doubles for the last couple of years. Uh, those guys played super well. Uh, I, I think that was their first time playing together. And I thought that that overall chemistry definitely meshed. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Tough, tough team. Uh, Zane's getting really dangerous on fourth balls, just speeding everything up two handed backhand, forehand side, really trusting that paddle head speed. And then Eric's just become a complete player. We see the big frame. Uh, we see what he's able to do offensively. But the guy has some really soft hands, too. So, yeah, weird match because it's not like the four of you were incapable of dinking. But um, certainly it was a game of go hard early. And it's the first match I've seen where, like, intentionally trying to hit each other's body seemed to be the best speed up 
option, which honestly, like big argument after that match for should eye protection just be like required or just a standard for everybody? Because if paddles are going to be that hot and you're intentionally tactically going just at the body, not trying to make the shot in the court, like, I don't know if it gets too fast. Like we just hate to see, you know, an injury of a, of a top level pro with, you know, an eye injury or something really, really bad like that. So certainly worth, I think, getting the discussion started. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, like dealing with Eric and I mean, I mean, obviously Zane's drive is big, but Eric's drive, like my fourth ball, literally all I had to do was just kiss it at like 10%, <laughs> the old, the old first base. And, uh, and I mean, literally there was so much pop off of my fourth, just with like a quick little A to B punch. And, uh, I, I, I felt like, you know, during that match, uh, yeah, it was like some of the like hardest heavy hitting that I've dealt with and had to, and, and like really had to counter. Um, and, uh, no, the game's the game's speeding up games getting quicker. And I mean, Eric is freaking playing like a playing like a singles player, you know, I mean, I mean, get the. <laughs> Get the guy playing singles on, on. Thursday, right? <laughs> Throw him in the draw. <clears throat> uh, okay, Championship Sunday. Uh, we we kind of discussed this earlier, but uh, ended up losing to Jay. Had a had a had a game point game two. Jay played super well. Uh, the guy has totally uh, changed his game, and that that paddle is definitely suiting him. So um, love that man, and kudos to him. Um, in Dubs, we ended up losing uh, games one and two. Threw me on the left in game three. Uh, we, we definitely had a couple looks, ended up losing game three, like 11, eight or 11, nine. Um, but as we all know, the Johns lock it down, come, come Sunday, uh, surgical Benny always shows up and brings his best stuff. Uh, but I thought overall good, good weekend for me. Happy to have came back in my corner. Uh, uh, and more than grateful to have my lovely wife in my corner as well. And, uh, come, come Mesa. We're going to be a dangerous team because <laughs> we're going to have, my full-time security guard, training our uh, uh, strength and training coach, nutritionist, stretcher, Craig there. We'll have Pete train there, full-time videographer. We'll have K Mac there. Yeah, we're gonna have a dangerous crew. We we, we are. will have a dangerous. We coming. Crew. We coming. <laughs> Mama, uh, talk to us about this family vlog that we have taking place and oh, launching man. this week. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow or today, I guess when this episode launches, I think we're going to also launch our family channel. Uh, it's called Making MacGuffins, and it's just a behind-the-scenes look of our crazy, chaotic life. I mean, we get lots of com comments all the time and people asking or or really just saying, like, we don't know how you guys do it. This is crazy. Like, how does it even play out? Like, where are the kids? You know, who's watching them? All of the things. And so uh, we decided that, you know, it was time to just kind of share the story and, you know, like kind of let everybody in and, and for any reason at the end of the day, maybe if it's just selfishly that we're, we're documenting this crazy journey we're on and, um, that we continue to be on and let people kind of see in. So the good, bad, and the ugly here it comes. And I think <laughs> it'll be, it'll be fun. But, but part of what we're talking about with, uh, P train or Peter, uh, he's our full-time videographer. So he trained dog, he's literally with us all the time. And it's pretty cool too. Like, uh, I think, um, you know, sometimes he's with me and the kids and then sometimes he's with Tyson. And so you kind of get this dual, dual purpose look at, at our lives and, and what we're up to. So I also, and that. Meg, where, where can folks find that? Is that going to be on, on YouTube or? Yeah. So it'll be YouTube. It'll be a channel called making MacGuffins, And so you'll awesome. be able to see it on YouTube, but uh, eventually we'll have a, a website up as well. Full on like vlog and blog also too, just a place where I can share little tips and tricks of, of traveling with kids and, you know, all the different things I use. You are the and, expert. Yeah. No, no, no. But like little secrets too, maybe with Delta or with the crib tent that I use that keeps us sane and keeps our kids sleeping and, you know, different things like that I can share. Right. Uh, so, so yeah. You are kind of an expert on what I call those just like little life hacks, yeah. right? She so is the guru. Share that wisdom. She <laughs> is the guru. And something that my wife did not mention is that I also spend time with our children. It's not, it's not just hey. my wife. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't mean it that no, way. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but yes, make sure you guys like, subscribe uh, to that new channel called Making MacGuffins. Uh, yeah. Going to be lots of fun. We're going to be posting vlogs weekly. And uh, yeah, just want to say thanks to all of our viewers and subscribers. Um, K Mac, next camp you are teaching is when and where? Yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be next month. 
in uh, Lakeville, Minnesota after that, uh, after the PPA tournament there. Minnesota, nice. Uh, for all the Minnesota pickleball players out there, get over to my website, TysonMcGuffin.com, or simply, uh, if you're going to that PPA tournament at that Lifetime facility, yeah. that, that Lifetime facility is super nice. The camp is going to be at <laughs> Lifetime? At Lifetime, yep. <coughs> yep Perfect. At the Lifetime facility, and I know there's a huge demand for pickleball in that, like, central state's you know, area. I feel like there's not a whole ton of like high level instruction. Um, I could be wrong there, but that's kind of been our experience the last few years, just a ton of people asking and requesting. And so um, definitely take advantage. Um, it'll be inside. We know it's cold and <laughs> snowy and icy, so it is indoors. Uh, so you don't have to worry about weather or anything like that. So definitely get out, come out for it. Yeah. And I, camp. and I know this year we've had some, uh, Request about doing more camps uh, East Coast. So this is definitely one of the few camps that we are teaching East Coast. So for all the East Coasters out there that have been uh, dying to get K-Mac'd, uh, get over to my website, TysonMcGuffin.com. This is your chance. Camp will be <laughs> Monday, Tuesday after the PPA event. If you guys want to play the PPA tournament and watch, play where the pros play. Yep. You, you guys can have your full PPA experience Thursday through Sunday, bang out a camp Monday, Tuesday. And get make a full week out of it. You why know, not? why not? Why not? Why not? Full pickle. Okay. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. Appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next episode.